Wow, a guy whose last name is Zombie. He must be super cool, or not. I never fell for Rob Zombie. I never enjoyed his breed of trendy pop metal. Nor did I completely accept his films. I never bought into his appearance, cool music videos, nor the merchandise he sold to MTV followers. Here, I aim to comment on Rob Zombie in regards to his filmmaking career. I also hope to expose him for the liar and traitor he is to the fans who worship him. Specifically, how he slumped so low as to destroy a classic horror franchise. For rock and roll's finest, Rob Zombie. I'm no music nut. I'm not an expert on metal, let alone music in general. Nor am I here to argue that Rob Zombie's music is just hipster garbage. I do admit, however, that while growing up in a generation where his music was a piece of the soundtrack, I did find several of his tracks catchy. They sounded as he intended them to sound. Cool, but finding a few tunes catchy wasn't enough to make me like him or his music. There was just something more to Rob Zombie that I just didn't understand. At the time, it wasn't so much that I didn't like his music, but what he strived to represent. His last name of Zombie seemed to be a blatant attempt to appeal to trendy metal kids. I understand that Cummings isn't necessarily a cool last name to have, but he could have stuck with something that was a bit less cliché for a metal act. Perhaps I just didn't get it, but really, it didn't make a difference to me at the time. He seemed to be just another icon with a cool last name. Around 2001, while I was skimming through some horror-related message boards on the net, I remember coming across a link to Universal's promotional site for Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. I had always heard rumors that he was making a very sick and twisted horror film. At first glance, I thought it was somehow related to a much earlier film of a very similar title, The House of Seven Corpses, but later did I realize that it was a completely different film with no relevance to the other. But despite the title ripoff and my dislike for his music, I was open-minded and decided to give the movie a chance. Howdy folks! You like blood, violence, freaks of nature? To be completely honest, the trailer excited me. It appeared to be a throwback to the horror films of the 70s and 80s. Prior to House, there was an onslaught of glossy teen horror flicks such as Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer. These films had known faces and were polished by Hollywood standards. At the time, I had grown to hate these films. They just didn't feel real and I had trouble separating the actors from the teen chick flicks they had previously appeared in. Zombie's House, however, gave hope that a gritty horror film could make it to theaters, and at the time, I felt it would be the closest I would get to seeing a 70s, 80s horror film on the big screen. When I finally saw the film in theaters, I admit, I was somewhat relieved. Not because I liked what I saw, but because it was refreshing to see something totally different than another Scream imitation. It was dark, twisted, and gritty like the horror films made decades back. But later did I realize that my excitement for seeing a classic imitation in theaters had clouded my judgments. Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses had predictable and cliche characters. He ripped off score and felt too much like an MTV music video. Why did it feel like a music video? Because up until that point, they were the only real experience he had. What led Rob Zombie to make his own film? Let's back up a bit. Prior to directing his first film, Zombie designed and directed a variety of music videos, as well as an animated sequence for Beavis and Butthead to America. 
But even before working in music videos, the only experience he had in film or television was working as a production assistant for Pee Wee's Playhouse. And later, as a writer of a rejected screenplay for a Crow sequel. So how does Zombie go from a PA on the set of a children's television program to directing MTV music videos for artists such as Ozzy Osbourne? Because of the notoriety he had achieved as a metal act, and the little experience he had directing his own videos, these videos were nothing more than amateur short clips that depended almost entirely on their editing rather than their visual content. The video for his hit song Dragula seemed to be a bunch of clips directed entirely in front of a green screen, with a variety of black and white movie clips juxtaposed against them. How does he go from music videos to film? Not because of the music videos he directed, but rather a haunted house he designed for Universal Studios. So Universal's association with Rob Zombie actually goes back to last decade. In the late 1990s and the 2000s, we did an attraction with Rob Zombie. Apparently, that's all it took for Universal to offer him a multi-million dollar contract to direct and write a script they probably never thought to read. It's pretty fair to say that Zombie's film and video career couldn't have evolved if it hadn't been for his music act, if he had never gotten a solo contract with Geffen Records, which is owned by Universal, it's quite possible he would never have been given the budget needed to make house. Without Universal backing him from the beginning, Rob Zombie the hard director probably wouldn't exist. In other words, Rob Zombie's career as a filmmaker has been guided by his status as a metal figure, not his filmmaking ability. In an interview with DVDtalk.com in 2003, he states, They, the fans and critics, think if you're a video store clerk, making movies is really a passion you have. Whereas if you've already had success in another field, they think you're just sort of fucking around. Oh, look, someone handed me this opportunity on a golden platter. But it's not really like that. It's difficult. With that said, how exactly is it then, Rob Zombie? We never really get a clear answer. It might have been difficult to make the film, but already belonging to a studio you made millions for is a pretty damn good way of getting a movie deal, especially when you have a marketable household name. Yeah, no, everybody loves you when you're rich. When Zombie brought his work print of House before the heads of Universal for review, they felt the film was too shocking and weird for their studio. Instead of going through the complications of re-editing the film, they sold the film to Zombie, who then finds a home for it with Lionsgate, who at the time was making a name for itself as a strong horror distributor. House was moderately successful, in that it made more money than it cost to make. Being directed by a metal icon, the film appeared to both horror and metal fans, leading to its small success. When Lionsgate saw the success of House, they also saw dollar signs and were quick to jump on the opportunity for a sequel. Zombie quickly agreed on a sequel for the same reason. In an interview with TheFilmAsylum.com, when asked if he had always planned a sequel to House, he admits it was more because of the success of Corpses. Police have uncovered reads like this. Words can't describe it. Upon its release, The Devil's Rejects shocked many who thought it was going to be just another long and dark psychedelic music video. To the amazement of many genre fans, even Ebert and Roper, who had had a history of bashing violent horror films, gave The Devil's Rejects two thumbs up. Okay, our next movie is The Devil's Rejects, and it has to be the sickest. The most twisted, the most deranged movie so far this year. You get all that, plus the scariest clown in recent cinema history, a great rock soundtrack, and some gruesomely entertaining kills. It's a sick film, but for what it is, thumbs up. Hate to disappoint you, but I'm going to give a thumbs up to him for exactly the same reasons that you have. But I don't want anyone watching this show and writing in and saying we gave a two thumbs up, so they went to see it and it was disgusting. It might have been better made technically, but I felt it once again relied too heavily on shock value rather than rich storytelling. Nonetheless, it was a much bigger success than House. Rob Zombie the filmmaker was now in the spotlight. At this point in Zombie's career, my opinion of him was pretty indifferent. I really only thought of him as a metal icon who made a few horror flicks. In that respect, I didn't exactly hate him. I really had no reason to. After reading several interviews published in magazines and various websites, I began to realize he was in fact passionate about horror films. In that regard, I gained some respect towards him despite not being a fan. 
as like much of the horror community, he loved and respected the classics and was openly against the Hollywood horror remake trend. In fact, there were several occasions where he confessed his dislike for remakes. In his interview with Are You Going Magazine in 2002, he states, I feel it's the worst thing any filmmaker can do. I actually got a call from my agent and they asked me if I wanted to be involved with the remake of Chainsaw. I said no fucking way. Those movies are perfect. You're only going to make yourself look like an asshole by remaking them. In a DVDtalk.com interview in 2003, he states, Remaking films that were already great is kind of stupid. I don't really see the point. And also, in an interview with Bladedisgusting.com in 2004, he states, My first reaction was to just wonder what the point of the remake is. I thought the same when they remade Psycho, and now they're remaking Dawn the Dead as well. I love the original so much that I just wonder what's the point of doing a remake of these great movies is? What do you hope to improve upon? Finally, a celebrity that was against the Hollywood remake trend, I thought to myself. But this newfound respect for zombie wouldn't last long. Something would happen that would turn the entire horror world upside down. On June 4th, 2006, it was officially announced. Something every purist fan dreaded had come to formation. John Carpenter's horror classic, Halloween, was going to be remade. It was truly a shock. It then became apparent that no film was safe. By that point, they've remade Psycho, Dawn of the Dead, The Amityville Horror, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and others. Now they had their eyes set on Halloween and made it official. I asked the same questions many of the fans were wondering. Who was the guy in charge of its production? Who could be responsible for desecrating the grounds from which the slasher genre has evolved? That man's name was Rob Zombie. I couldn't believe what I was reading. Was this the same Rob Zombie who hated remakes? Rob Zombie's third feature film, Halloween, is the latest in a long line of spin-offs inspired by John Carpenter's 1978 original. I finally found respect for the guy, and now he does this? Much of the horror community felt the same and asked the same questions. Why would he do it? How could he do it? Why? With just a phone call me about a meeting. It was basically the meeting was about Halloween, in any form, you know. Not a remake and not a prequel or a sequel. It was sort of like, you know, sort of threw it at me, Halloween, what do you think? And um, the whole remake thing sort of came from me. The whole remake thing sort of came from me. The Weinstein Company clearly didn't care what kind of product Zombie was going to put out, as long as it was going to be a horror film with the zombie name attached. In the interview with the TheCinemaSource.com, he explains, I think if I had told them, well, what if it was Michael Myers in space fighting Predator? Then they would have been like, yeah. For this go-round, Dimension Films gave Zombie the freedom to do pretty much whatever he wanted. If I had thrown every single thing out the window that John Carpenter had created, I, I don't even think they would have cared. They knew his name with the Halloween title would bring in money, and money they wanted. They even told him to make it more Rob Zombie. The studio kept on saying, like, make it more Rob Zombie. I'm like, I don't know what that means. You know, I can't talk about myself as if I'm someone else. Throughout the unfortunate ordeal, I sought out answers. I read just about every interview and article that had to do with the new Halloween film. First, I had to know why he decided to do it. Of course he wouldn't admit that it was money, but I had to hear what he had to say to be fair, and so I did. These are the possible reasons for Zombie, the alleged horror fan, to remake Halloween. I like being a rocker and a movie director. It's great. It's all good all the time. In early interviews, I'd remember him stating that bad films should be remade, not ones that were already perfect. In the interview with Are You Going in 2002, he states, Go remake something that's a piece of shit and make it good. And as we already read, in 2003, he says it again to DVDtalk.com, Remaking films that were already great is kind of stupid. I don't really see the point. This led me to believe that maybe he wasn't going back on his word, but rather he believed that the original Halloween was in fact a horrible film. Despite repeated claims that he loved the original, in interviews with MTV, he points out what he believed to be the flaws with Carpenter's classic to demonstrate how his film is an improvement. They are as follows. I felt sometimes that the character of Dr. Loomis just popped in and out when they needed somebody to say something dramatic. You know, Loomis in, the, in all the other Halloween movies was kind of crazy 
like a crazy guy running around trying to get people to help him. And it wasn't too hard to believe why no one believed him because he seemed a little bit like he was crazy and drunk and off his rocker. There's so, even things about the original Michael Myers in Halloween that bothered me. We found the only mechanic that wore a pristine mechanics uniform to kill. But when wanting to make it different, I was like, well, I don't want it just to be like he happened to rob a hardware store and steal that mask. What if they didn't have that mask? What if what would he steal like a Jimmy Carter mask or you know, or, or an Elmo mask if that was the only one available at the hardware store? And, and why is when did he rob the hardware store? In broad daylight and the alarm's still ringing? Like, where is everybody? Those little things would always bother me in that movie. Thank God Loomis stopped to make that phone call exactly at that phone booth where he dropped the car off and found the rabbit and red matchbook. Those kind of coincidences always bothered me, so I'm trying to make things make a little more. I haven't seen the station wagon around. Is Michael Myers driving the station wagon Michael in this Michael Myers one? does not know how to drive in this movie, because that always bothered me. <laughs> you know, they played it off like, someone must have gave him lessons, but, you know, no one gave him lessons. He's in maximum security prison, so he doesn't drive. It bothered me. It bothered me in that movie. That always bothered me. So could it be that Zombie, despite his claims of loving the original, felt it could have been done better? This is an important question that fans will probably never receive an honest answer to. Zombie's perspective towards remakes slowly began to change. For years he had preached his dislike for the remake phenomenon, but ever since his deal with the Weinstein Company, he began to believe it could be an incredible idea and in that he was originally taking the completely wrong attitude. In an interview, he goes on to say, The remake thing is done all the time, but it's not done well. Truthfully, if I couldn't see any way to do this, I wouldn't do it because it's a challenging project. A year later, his perspective of remakes weighs more in favor of them. He states, To me, remakes are sort of about passion and intent. But the most popular theory speculated among fans is that he did it for money. Money has always been the major, if not only, motive in Hollywood studios. We've seen them produce inferior imitations to mimic success, and we've also seen long strings of sometimes low-grade sequels for that same reason. It would only make sense that the Hollywood money bug had bitten Zombie as well. In an interview with IconsOfFright.com, he responds to all the criticism. People thought I was only doing this for money. No, I could have went on tour and made 10 times the money I made making this movie. It wasn't about money. It was just about really wanting to do it. And I think that's when movies work. Rob Zombie was right about one thing. He would in fact have made more money on tour than he would have made from this movie's production alone. But there was something he was leaving out in that interview with IconsOfFright.com. There was a long-term incentive for Zombie to team up with the Weinstein Company and Dimension. According to an article in Variety, Dimension Films has inked a two-picture deal with writer-director Rob Zombie. Zombie goes on to state that the deal was a natural step in the evolution of my film career. Finally, I had my answer. What does this amount to? At first, his instincts as a fan said no, don't do it. But as he dreamt dollar signs over the next couple of weeks or months, he saw the Halloween remake as a great opportunity to break into the major studios of Hollywood. It's true he didn't use Halloween as a source of income, but what he did use it for was an opportunity. Even the Cinemasource.com article goes on to state, Now Zombie has his first shot at mainstream filmmaking, with the remaking re-imaging of John Carpenter's classic horror film Halloween for the Weinstein Company. Is anyone really surprised that Zombie decided to take advantage of his image and accept the Weinstein deal as an opportunity for future projects? In the 2004 interview with BladeDiscussing.com, he's asked how he feels towards the movies his music is heard in. To be honest, I don't really care. Even if the movie is shit, I just take the money and run. This answer is an important reflection of Zombie's character and foreshadows his future decision to desecrate a classic. Rob Zombie lacks what many lose when they allow themselves to be sucked into the Hollywood industry artistic integrity. It's such a great story that once you have that, you can flip it upside down and take it in a whole nother direction. Once it sunk in that Zombie was going to do the remake, we all wondered how he was going to do it. Since he was going to do it regardless of how the fans felt, he might as well do it with respect towards the original, according to the press release. Zombie's vision of this film is an entirely new take on the legend and will satisfy fans of the classic Halloween legacy while beginning a new chapter in the Michael Myers saga. This new film will not only appeal to horror fans, but to a wider movie going audience as well. It will not be a copycat of any prior films in the Halloween franchise. So it appeared that Zombie was going to do something totally different. At this point, I agree with Zombie about one thing. What's the point of a remake if it imitates the original? But on that note, I would also say, what's the point of creating a remake that is totally different? If that's the case, why not call it by a different title, instead of milking off the iconic character and recognizable title? Is that how you're going to overspect the original? 
There's obviously a problem with either choice you make. The only solution is to not make a remake. So how different would the film be? As he had mentioned, it was going to center around our iconic character, Michael Myers. But what concerned many fans is that Zombie was going to demystify the character. In the original, Myers seemed to be an ordinary kid that snapped one night. There was no rhyme, reason, or motive to the killing of his sister in the original. And in the new film, there wouldn't be either. Or would there be? It seems Zombie hardly knew himself. In the interview with TheCinemaSource.com, he states, I didn't want him to have a really terrible childhood, Zombie says, noting that he didn't want to make any excuses for him, because when it comes down to it, he's just evil. And in an interview with IconsOfFright.com, I wanted to get a glimpse of his life, but everything that would make him that person is completely unexplainable. You can't go, oh, this happened, so he's that. No, the whole point was I wanted to set him in a more lower class situation, because it doesn't matter if he grew up in a rich family or a poor family, he's still fucking psycho. You know, I don't, I don't explain why he is the way he is, because what I found interesting is that you can't really explain it. Because, you know, truly if that character was a real character, a real person, he's just sort of born that way. Sherry Moon agreeing with her husband states, I think you can safely assume he was just sort of born that way. But in other interviews, he contradicts himself. I, I tried to make everything he did be motivated and justified in some way, so it's never just random killing for no reason. Mm -hmm. There's like a reason for everything. Since it was clear that Zombie himself didn't know exactly what he was doing, do you think he would go to the fans for any advice or guidance? After all, the fans are the ones who've kept the franchise alive for so long. He comments on how he feels about those who are openly opinionated on the Halloween remake concept. In pre-production on making the film, I didn't look at anything online or anywhere, because I didn't care. Because you're so focused on what you're trying to do, that it just doesn't matter. The only way to make your movie is that you have to have a vision of what you want and you have to be so single-minded that you don't give a fucking shit what anyone thinks. So is this Zombie's response to the fans who made these films what they are, especially the original? He doesn't give a fucking shit what anyone thinks? If this was Zombie's original idea such as House or Devil's Rejects, I'd completely agree. But we don't have that here. Zombie is given the keys to a well-established franchise that spans over 30 years. These films belong to the fans that made them flourish. We paid to see them and paid to get the sequels made. When you have a franchise like Halloween or any horror legacy for that matter, the filmmakers should have a responsibility towards the fans who kept it alive. But instead, Zombie has to be, in his own words, single-minded. Bow your head in shame. I'm not a fan of like 80s slasher bloody movies. It's always bored me, bored me then, bores me now. On August 31st, 2007, Rob Zombie's atrocity was unleashed upon the world. It was worse than I could have ever imagined. Rob Zombie had claimed that he wanted his film to be more believable than the original, when in fact, it had many elements that weren't believable at all. Here are the five major flaws of Rob Zombie's Halloween. It's fucking work tonight. Somebody around here has got to make some money. I'm all broken up here, bitch. I can't work. Yeah, and whose fault is that? God, you're pathetic. I never completely understood why Zombie approached this film with white trash in mind. He intended to create something totally different from his previous films, but once again we see the same white trash characters living their white trash ways. I hope she likes cripples. Bitch, I will crawl over there and I will scum fuck this shit out of you. The amount of profanity in this film is a huge distraction. Sure, some might use profanity more than others, but this, listen for yourself. I have to fucking work tonight. I'm all broken up here, bitch. Fuck you. Put them flappy ass tits. Have a good fucking time. Bitch, and I will scum fuck this shit out of you. Oh, fucking loud mouth. That's all that fucker does is try and fuck you, bitch. Oh, God. And they're fucking gross. Man, that bitch got herself a nice little dump. Daughter's ass. Fucking whore. A little bitch. Give me a fucking break. End up cutting his dick and balls off. The fucking rat. <laughs> fucking rat. <laughs> fucking face. I like the mask because it hides my face. Zombie intend to strip Myers of all supernatural qualities, but the Myers we see in this film is quite the contrary. Miraculously, he goes from a young average sized boy to a huge overpowering monster by simply making paper masks in a small cell for 15 years. How does he have the strength to break chains? How does he have the strength to lift a grown man off the ground by his head and crush it? How is he able to take 3 or 4 gunshot wounds to the back and still be able to struggle with an erratic teenage girl? How does a mask survive after being buried for over 10 years? Latex rots. It's not going to last long being buried under some old floorboards. 
It would either dry rot and fall apart, or the humidity would fuse it into a big gooey latex ball. Listen from Zombie's effects man himself. And latex, it's a natural material and it rots. And especially if it's worn a lot and someone's sweating in it, it just accelerates that process. Zombie had stated he didn't want actors from the previous Halloween films to play in his film because the cameos become a joke, with the exception of Daniel Harris apparently. In my opinion, she was the only ex-Halloween actor cast in the remake because she was willing to be topless. Yeah? I'm so fucking you wanna fuck me? Seeing the young girl we grew to love in parts 4 and 5 all growing up and topless would obviously cause some perverse talk in the horror world, and thus, Zombie made an exception. In addition, he includes cameos of a different kind, his buddies. If Zombie wants to put his buds in his own films, then fine, but the fans own Halloween. We don't want to see the same tribe of horror duds in the same movies over and over again. You, you seem to have a family on all your movies. You, you bring the same, same actors along to your, your projects. How do you think that's helped you? Well, I mean, I think everyone does that. All, a lot of directors do that. I like to try to jam as many of my friends in there too. Awesome. So you know that done deal, no matter what, even yeah, no matter what, I wouldn't do another one. For a while, I thought it would end there for Rob Zombie. Perhaps not his film career, but his involvement with the Halloween franchise. In several interviews, he expressed firmly that he would not be involved with any sequel since he had done everything he wanted to do with his remake. Would this be a franchise? Are you, are you talking about doing another in a series? I'm not talking about it. I mean, I wanted to do the one film with a beginning, a middle, and an end, and then be done with it. What about you? Would you do another one? Uh, I have signed on for another one because I was under the belief that Rob was doing another one. Oh. Well, how do you feel about that? I just learned that as well. How do you feel about Rob maybe not, uh, definitely not doing a second one? Well, uh, you know, it, it changes a few things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so does that mean that there, if, if this is, does well and received well, that there'd be a sequel? Probably. Not with me. I mean, I'm done. I don't want to do any more. I mean, I did everything I wanted to do in this movie, but, you know. So you know that done deal, no matter what, even yeah, no matter what, I wouldn't do another one. I figured a sequel was bound to happen. It would only make sense since the remake brought in money at the box office. But who would direct it? It couldn't be Zombie, right? Since he claimed to want no involvement in future Halloween projects? Well, my friends, we should have learned the first time not to take Zombie at his word. He was declared as the director of the Halloween remake sequel. It all started at the Scream Awards. I was at the Scream Awards and I thought somebody else was making this movie. And I ran into Matt Stein from Weinstein Company and I asked Matt, I said, how's it going? Halloween 2? And he's like, not good, Rob, not good. Um, and they hadn't even started yet. And I was like, oh, well, you know, if anything happens, I wouldn't mind doing it. It's also interesting to note that even though his wife died in the remake, he manages to squeeze her into the sequel. God forbid he couldn't have his wife in one of his movies. This would mean less money for the family bank account. That's why I like the movie so much, because it doesn't have to adhere to these nonsense rules about what a Halloween movie can or cannot be. I'm making the rules now, I can do whatever I want. Once upon a time, Rob Zombie was an awesome metal icon that wanted to make movies that were just as edgy as his music. He did so and succeeded. With success came Hollywood knocking at his door, and with them, a huge briefcase of cash money. Zombie was a sellout well before he started making movies and continues to be now. As a self-proclaimed horror fan, he destroyed the very franchise that opened a whole new subgenre of horror. And what does he receive? A standing ovation by those who don't understand the importance of originality and preservation, and reviled by those who want to protect the name of classic horror. We can no longer talk about Halloween as a single entity in the cinematic timeline, but now must make a distinction between the original and the remake. There is only one Halloween. And there will only be one Halloween, and that film was made in 1978 by John Carpenter and his crew. Robert Cummings committed a crime against true terror. On a final note, I'd like to end with a quote on remakes. I don't think it's because someone feels inspired. It's done because someone sees money. Personally, Rob, I couldn't agree more. you listen to their opinion I mean you can't live or die by critics but now it's just any jack off with a website's a critic and gives a shit but now every jackhole with a blog considers himself a movie critic and it's kind of like you know it's kind of like it feels like they've misconstrued criticism with I have to hate everything heavy metal rocker Rob Zombie lives behind this gate in a community proud of its peacefulness
Not quiet enough for the white zombie frontman and the director of horror flicks. I mean, like, he moved into the back of a park, so, like, you gotta expect a little noise. In fact, I basically turned it down. I was like, mm, because I kind of felt how everyone else felt, that a remaking Halloween was like, you know, you know, like pissing in the Holy Grail or something.